What's going on, everybody? It's your man, Gamecock Chuck, back again with another video on this Thursday afternoon as we head into uh, week six of the college football season. Man, it's so hard to believe the season's just going by so fast, man. Uh, seems like we were just talking about, you know, spring practice and uh, summer camps and everything, but it's so hard to believe we're already at week, going into week six uh, of this year. Hey, before I go any further with my uh, video here, I just ask that you do me a couple things. Ask you like and subscribe to this channel if you ain't already subscribed. Uh, help me grow my uh, channel. Help me get out there in the YouTube world. Uh, share this video with any uh, sports-related fans or Gamecock fans that you know. Just share this video with them and uh, uh, help me spread uh, my content across the uh, platform here. Um, I'm new to the YouTube channel. Uh, world so i'm just trying to get my stuff out there i'm a game co content creator of all things uh football baseball basketball whatever the case may be uh just trying to help my channel grow uh, if you already subscribed i appreciate you thank you for uh giving me an opportunity and that's just what i ask for everybody just give me an opportunity to enter entertain you for a little bit uh if you like my channel or if you don't leave me a comment below let me know what you think um uh, Hit the notification button once you subscribe. That way you get notified when I put out my content. I try to do at least uh, three to four videos a week. Usually around, I try to put them out usually around Thursday or Friday because, you know, work schedule and uh, family commitments and things like that. So, you know, just YouTube ain't my only uh, thing right now. So, you know, I got other things going on with work and everything. So, but uh, just do me a favor and help me out. Help my channel grow a little bit. Uh, help me gain some confidence and, uh, Get my stuff out there. So uh, with that being said, let's jump right into this video. This is my week six uh, preview and prediction video for the South Carolina Gamecocks. Uh, we head on the road, go to Knoxville, Tennessee to take on the Volunteers. Uh, it's a noon kickoff on ESPN2. You know, both teams right now are three and two. They're kind of similar in, in that aspect. You know, both teams have lost to some good teams. Uh, Tennessee lost to uh, Pitt. And then they also lost to Florida. So they had two losses on their records. Uh, South Carolina's two loss came at uh, the hands of Georgia, which I consider to be the uh, the number one team in the country. They got the, the best defense. You know, offense is a little lacking at times, but, you know, they're they coming along, you know. But I still consider them the best team in the country. You know, you, it's hard to uh, knock what they've done in Athens. Uh, the talent level and everything is just so great there. Uh like uh, Shane Beamer said, you know, they got five stars on top of five stars sitting behind five stars. So they got some athletes there in Georgia. The other loss came a little disappointing because, you know, Kentucky, you know, we lost to Kentucky and they gave us every opportunity to take that game away from them. You know, turnover after turnover after turnover. But if you're not taking what they're giving you and turning them into points, it's going to be a long day and usually not going in in a good result. So, that was our second loss, you know. But as far as the wins go, you know, Tennessee, they did what South Carolina did. They beat the teams they should have beat. You know, they beat Tennessee Tech, Bowling Green, and uh, Missouri. You know, South Carolina beat Eastern Illinois, East Carolina, and Troy. So, you know, they are where they are. And uh, we look for this to be a, a good – I look for this to be a good and competitive and uh, similarly, similarly – evenly matched teams, in my opinion. I mean, I may be way off, you know, it's up to you guys, let me know what you think in the comments, but I think we're, I think we're both a, a teams that, I think the teams, both teams match up pretty well across, across the board. Uh, right now, Tennessee, or South Carolina, Tennessee's a 10 and a half point favor over South Carolina with a 78.8% uh, win percent, uh, win chance according to the ESPN FPI. So, you know, whatever that means, you know, you, you guys take that and figure out what, you know, whichever way you want to. I mean, that, them numbers don't really mean a whole lot. You know, it's the, the talent and the product you put on the field and how well you got prepared and coached up in the game. So I hardly ever look at them uh, percentages and, and point spread. I mean, unless you're a gambler, I mean, they don't mean much to me. So, you know, Tennessee, when I look at them, you know, they like I said, they just like South Carolina. They both have a first-year head coach. You know, Tennessee has Josh Heupel coming in there. I think he come from UCF, so he's coming over to Tennessee to, excuse me, get their program uh, headed back in the right direction. Like I said, this is his first year. 
And in, in South Carolina, on the other hand, you know, South Carolina's coming, uh, got uh, Shane Beamer coming in, his first year head coach. Actually, this is his first year of ever being a head coach. So he's never had any head coaches, head coaching experience. So, you know, he comes to South Carolina from Oklahoma, bringing a good culture, a uh, good message to the young the young men out there that's uh, playing for him. So, like I said, he's assembled a pretty good staff, and this is his first year as well. So they both kind of the same when you look at it uh, from from a head coach and a record and, and different things like that. When I look at Tennessee, you know, their offense, they're a team that averages around 255 yards uh, rushing per game. And that number, I know it kind of jumps off the page because uh, Tennessee's not a very uh, – I don't think they're a very good offensive team, but that number jumps off the page for several reasons. When I look at that, you know, I look at the games that they played – some of the rushing averages, or some of the rushing yards they got in their contest. You know, when they played Bowling Green, they had 331 yards of rushing. Uh, Tennessee Tech, they had a little over 200. At, I think it was like 201. And then whenever they played Missouri last weekend, they rushed for like 450 yards or a little more, 452 yards or something like that. It was crazy, man. But I, when I look at that game, and I looked at probably about half of it, um, Missouri just looked a little undersized, a little overmatched out there, and Tennessee was able to uh, impose their will and basically do whatever they want. I mean, it was like 45 to 10 by halftime. So, I mean, uh, Tennessee just, I mean, to me, that, that's kind of just skews the numbers in their favor. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, that's, that's their average right now. Their running back, is, uh, running back room is led by Tyon Evans, a uh, junior. Uh, right out of the Hartsville, South Carolina area. So he's a, a South Carolina kid that uh, was recruited by South Carolina. But apparently when he went to junior college route, uh, Will Muschamp and staff dropped the ball on that, and he ended up going to Tennessee. You know, can't knock the young man for getting out there and, and getting his opportunity and making the best of it. Uh, so far in the year, he's rushed for 357 yards and uh, five touchdowns. Uh, when I looked at that game last week, man, it, whenever I saw him running, man, if he had a crease or if he got in the open field, it was kind of hard to hard to catch him, hard to corral him because he's a uh, explosive back. Uh, and at the beginning of the year, when you look at the quarterback situation in Tennessee, at the start of the year, there was a controversy, I guess, going on, and they finally uh, settled in on Hendon Hooker to uh, lead the offense. You know, he's like a dual-threat quarterback. He can make plays with his legs. Uh, if the pocket breaks down, if he can get outside, break containment, you know, he can make some things happen with his legs. Um, and if he's not, you know, if he, if he has time in the pocket, you know, he can get the ball to his number one guy, you know, uh, the wide receiver, Bellis Jones Jr. He transferred in last year from uh, Southern Cal. I guess when he got out there, I guess things didn't work out the way he, you know, thought it would or planned it would work out, but he transferred back closer to home. He's an Alabama kid, so I guess he wanted to get closer to home, and so he transferred to Tennessee. And, you know, he don't have no eye-popping stats right now, but he does have some skills. You know, he's a pretty, pretty quick guy. You know, getting the ball in multiple ways, uh, jet sweeps, you know, slants, go routes, whatever the case may be. They, they find, him, find a way to get him the ball. So, you know, that's, that's, what, I look, that's what I see on offense when I see Tennessee. Uh, as far as the defense in Tennessee, I, I I don't I don't know what to make of them because I don't think they're that good. They're not that stout right now. They are 51st in the country in overall defense, uh, giving up just a little bit over 339 yards uh, per game. Their run defense is 25th in the country. Their pass defense is 43rd in the country, and their overall scoring defense is 49th in the country. So no real. Uh, no real strengths there. Maybe on outs other outside of uh, the rush defense is pretty good, but outside of that, you know, they really don't have a whole lot of strengths on defense. Uh, their leading tackler is a safety, uh, Trayvon Flowers, which uh, to me that'd be like a glaring. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how you say it. Like a like a red flag to me, I guess, because you know your safety shouldn't be the leading the leading tackler. You know, if you got good solid linebacker play and a good defensive front, I think uh, the safety shouldn't be the, the leading tackler of the team, but he is, and it is what it is for Tennessee. On the year, they have 10 sacks. Uh, and I guess that averaged about two per game. So uh, they're they're getting a little bit of pressure, but they're not uh, they're not getting to the quarterback every time. But I guess they they're doing what they can. 
Um, on the flip side of that, when I look at South Carolina, you know, South Carolina, when they started the season, you know, they had a quarterback issue. You know, Luke Doty got hurt, so they had to uh, bring in Zeb Nolan uh, from the graduate assistant uh, room and got him put in there and everything. So their offense has struggled a lot. You know, outside of the Eastern Illinois game, you know, South Carolina has only managed to score one touchdown per game in the last four contests. So the the struggles are there, you know. Uh, the running back, you know, we got a talented running back room, and I don't know if it's just uh, the offensive line. Uh, the schemes are just too much for them, too complex, or or if they just rotating the backs in too much and not not focusing on giving one an opportunity to get established or what. I don't, I'm not sure what's going on there, but the offense has, through five games, has failed to uh, have an identity, I guess, you know. We do have, you know, outside weapons and Josh Fan and and uh, Jalen Brooks, but if if, the, if Doty or whoever the quarterback is, if they don't have time to get get a, have a clean, good clean pocket, they're not going to be able to get the ball out. And the only way you can have a good clean pocket and have the defense respect you is to uh, have a running game to help open up the passing game, you know, or vice versa, have a good passing game to open up the running game. But right now we're struggling to do both. You know, we have a good have a good couple games where receivers have some big yards and explosive plays, but they're so far and few and in between and there's just not enough consistency on offense when I look when I look at South Carolina. Uh, but that offensive line, you know, like we've been harping on this for the last what, four weeks now, three or four weeks. Offensive line just uh, it's a it's a mystery how a, a veteran group, a group that's returning everybody, minus Sedarius Hutcherson on offensive line, it's a, it's amazing how a team like that can, can struggle so much. I mean, the only thing we've changed is offensive coordinator. Uh, maybe maybe Satterfield's uh, schemes are a little too complex, or maybe we need to, uh, I don't want to say dumb them down, but I guess uh, make them a little more easy to understand, I guess. I don't know. But uh, maybe we need to do something like that to help the offensive line uh, get some consistency, get some good push, uh, create some holes for the running backs or something. I mean, something's got to give on that offensive line, man, because we can't be harping on this at the end of the year. And going forward, man, we're going to start playing some even harder teams, man. we got Florida coming up. we got uh, got Auburn. we got uh, Clemson coming up out of conference. we got uh, – Texas A&M, we got all these teams coming up, man. It's we got to we got to soon we got to get there soon. I, I prefer sooner than later, but we got to get there soon as far as the offensive line and and the protection and stuff. So when I look at and then whenever I look at South Carolina's defense, you know we're pretty stout in defense, one of the top uh, I'd say top thirty in defense maybe. We're pretty stout on defense. We got a good uh, good secondary. Uh, with Jalen Foster leading the way, you know, he still leads the country or, or tied for the most interceptions. Uh, he's right up there at the top with that. Uh, we got good, solid linebacker play. Everybody's stepping up with the absence of Sherrod Green. So, you know, with his injury and everything. So when I when I look at the defense of South Carolina, I don't – I mean, yeah, we struggled here recently to, uh, against the run, but these linebackers and the defensive uh, ends – they need to learn how to set the edge, and and the linebackers need to feel, learn how to fill the gaps and uh, help slow down some of this uh, running run defense that we've been giving up here lately. The last couple of games, um, I think I think the last couple of games we gave up we given up over two hundred yards rushing or something like that. Something crazy, man. So we got to Clayton White needs to get that figured out a little bit. I'm not too much worried about the defense in this game. I think we'll be able to hold our own, but uh, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be a, a good matchup between these two teams. Uh, for Tennessee, if they can uh, if they can get out and uh, and run uh, their explosive offense, their fast tempo offense, I think uh, I think it's going to give South Carolina fits uh, on the defensive side. It's going to wear us down. Um, and uh, if they can get that going, if they can get. Uh, if they can stay on the field and run their 90 plays or whatever they want to do, it could be a long day for the Gamecocks, and that'd be that'd be like a recipe for the Tennessee to win. 
when I look at South Carolina, it all starts on offense. We got to we got to be able to get an identity and stay on the field. Uh, we got to convert, you know, more third downs than we've had in the past. Uh, we got to get this running game going. Got to give our defense, you know, time to to rest on the sideline. You know, we can't we can't go out there and go three and out every time and expect the defense to hold up for four quarters. It just ain't it just isn't feasible and ain't possible for a defense to do that. You know, not even the best defense. You know, even Georgia. You know, if they if they had to go out there every third or fourth play back out on the field, they'd get worn out every time too. So it's not just, you know, it's just not just South Carolina that I'm talking about. It was just anybody. Anybody that has a, a bad offense puts their defense in a situation that does not benefit the team. So I think uh, I think for South Carolina, in order them, for them to uh, go up in there and uh, get a win, they need to uh, – they need to start getting some offensive identity, uh, being able to stay on the field longer, uh, limit Tennessee's offensive possessions. Uh, and the only way they can do that is stay on the field for long and sustaining drives, uh, give their defense a chance to rest. Like I said on the defense while I go, the defensive ends have got to learn how to set the edge to force the running backs inside and in the middle. And then the linebackers have got to be there to, to clean things up and fill the gap. I think that's, a, that's the keys to what South Carolina needs in order to win this game. Uh, but like I said in the beginning of the video, this is a pretty evenly matched team. I think on the talent level side, if I had to give an advantage, I'd give it to South Carolina as far as talent. But the thing about that is our talent is not uh, coming through on the field. It's not... Uh, it's not shining every every Saturday, you know, week in, week out. And, that, and that's an issue to me when I look at this game. Um, but if I, you know, before the season started, I, I gave a prediction for, like, the whole games, and I, I said South Carolina would beat Tennessee. Uh, but going, you know, what I've seen this year so far from the offensive side of the ball and the struggles that we're, we're having, you know, I look at this game and I this, – this, this game is – I don't know. It's, it could go. It could go several different ways based on several things. Um, but if I had to do a prediction and, and give a score right now, you know, as of today, you know, Thursday, I'm going to go ahead and say that my score prediction for this game. And I hate to say this, but I got Tennessee winning uh, 31 to 16 until South Carolina can show me some good offense, some consistency on the offensive line, the offensive playbook, the play calling. Until they show me that, it's kind of hard to give them any more than 16, 17 points because, like I said, you know, they've only scored one touchdown in the last in each of the last four games. So you, that's seven right there, you know. Where are they going to get the rest of them from? You know, Parker White. Damn good kicker, man. Real, real improved since when he first, you know, got to Columbia. Damn good kicker. So he's, you know, you guaranteed some solid points there. So, but I, like I said earlier, I, I, I see this game being somewhere between like 31 to 16, 21 to 13, or 28 to 13, Tennessee winning. And like I said, I hate to say it, but we are where we are. You know, I'm glad we're three and two, but until this offense starts showing, some consistency and being able to put some points on the board. I, I got to go with, uh, I got to be reasonable and logical here when I do this uh, prediction. So with that being said, comment on this video. Let me know what you think. Uh, like I've always said, you know, be respectful. I'll be respectful back. Uh, like and subscribe to my channel. Give me an opportunity to, to uh, entertain you. I know this video may have pissed some people off. may hurt your feelings, but I'm, like I said, I'm just being real. Hit the notification button once you subscribe. That way you get notified when I put future content out there. And uh, I guess that'll do it. Till next time, this is your man Gamecock Chuck. Go Gamecocks, and I'm out, baby.